uh, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, our regular time. Uh, there we go. Hey, my Periscope audience, how you guys doing? Uh, so thanks for tuning in. So got a lot of announcements, a lot of things to tell you today, so I want to jump right in. This is my last live prophetic word for this year, okay? So the prophetic word I give today, this is the last one for 2017. Uh, so I'm taking a break, and I'll be back on, is when I'll be back. January 14, 2018 is when I'll be back. So this is my live, uh, last live prophetic word for 2017. Now, what I am going to be doing in the meantime is I'm going to release a prophetic locator word. If you're not familiar with what a prophetic locator word is, it's where God has given us uh, the last word for the year, what's going on for the year, where he is with the end of the year. And many times it's just like the book of Revelation, uh, chapters 1, 2, and 3. It's your grades for the year, where you hear what the Lord has to say about how the year is closing out and where you are. Then I'm going to get another one for uh, January 2018 about how we're going to get started and what God wants to do coming into the new year. So it's very, very important that you listen to those prophetic locator words so you can find out where God is, where we are in the spirit, so that you can locate yourself in the spirit, so you can see if you're in tune with God or not. That is how people get left behind. That is how people wander in the wilderness till they die. That is how people miss their spouses. That is how people end up in the wrong cities. That's how people miss times of investment like Bitcoin just blew up. I guarantee you that somebody had an inkling to buy it and they didn't, and they missed that harvest. That's how you miss when you don't move when the Lord tells you to move. But you have to locate yourself in the Spirit. You have to know where you are. You have to know if there's some things that you left undone that need to be done. Okay? So again, this is my last live prophetic word broadcast for 2017, and I won't be back until January 14th of 2018, but I am going to be releasing at least one live prophetic located word, I think two, one for the end of 2017 and one for the beginning of 2018. Also, I'll have some new music I'm releasing uh, next month when I come back, so I hope you've had a chance to check out my first video that I dropped, Get Your Praise On, and then I'll have some uh, new music as well uh, when we get back in January, okay? All right, so on to today's word. So as always, I pray before I come on, and I ask the Lord what the word is, and I'm in meditation in the word all week long. And so the word that the Lord gave me today was the second part of Daniel 11.32. It's a very familiar scripture, but I'm going to read it. Daniel 11.32. In the King James, it says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, uh, let me read you that in the English Standard Version. He shall seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant, but the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. Now, the NIV, with flattery, he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant, but the people who know their God will firmly resist him. So I want to focus on the second part of that, the second part of verse 32. The people who know their God will display strength and take action. The people who know their God will firmly resist him, be strong and resist him. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. What you need to understand moving forward is that the enemy is going to come at you and try to stop every good thing. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about moving forward. We've been talking about taking the promised land. We've been talking about living your dream. We've been talking about giving birth to everything that God wants you to give birth to. Well, when you do that, the devil's going to come against you to resist you, to try and stop you, to try and slow you down, to try and throw crazy things in your way. And, and many times that comes through crazy people. People with attitudes. They just have a negative attitude. They have a wrong attitude. And the devil's trying to use them to slow you down, to knock you out of the way. Sometimes just crazy stuff happens, like the fires in Los Angeles. Crazy things in nature, just out of nowhere. Uh, so many things happen when you are on your way to moving forward. But the scripture says that the people who know their God will display strength, will resist him, will take action, will be strong, and will do exploits. 
So it's what I've been telling you all year long. You have to have your own personal relationship with God. One of the things that God has called me to do is to tear down all of our wrong religious notions. And one of the oldest religious notions we have as American Protestants is that even though we are Protestants, we still think many times you're supposed to have your relationship with God through the preacher. So some people, the only word they get all week is the word they get when they come to church on Sunday, and that's if they come. Some people, if you go to a prophetic church, the only prophetic word they get all week is the word they hear from the prophets in church when they come. Okay? That has to be over in your life. You cannot have your relationship with God through your spiritual leadership. We are here to help you in your relationship with God, but not to substitute for your relationship with God. The people who do know their God are going to be the ones that are able to resist the devil. That means you have to know God for yourself. You have to know his voice. Okay? God has something for you every day. Give us this day our daily bread. God has a word. God has a song. God has a psalm. God has a YouTube video he wants to watch. He wants you to watch from somebody else. He's got a scripture passage he wants you to study. He's got a book he wants you to read. God is going to develop you along the lines of your faith every day. And you have to learn how to go before the Lord and discern the leading of the Holy Spirit to find out what does God want me to read today. What does God want me to listen to today to strengthen my faith? Okay? You have to have a daily personal walk with God. There is no more room for this idea that you can just come to church on Sunday and get one meal on Sunday and that's all you need. Think about your natural body. Do you just eat one meal per week? Even if you have your weight under control and you have a low calorie count, do you just eat one meal per week? Is that enough? No, it's not. Well, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. You can't feed nor sustain your body just on one meal a week. Well, that's what some people are trying to do with their spiritual lives. They're trying to run a church on Sunday and hear the pastor preach for like 30 or 45 minutes and think that's all I need till next Sunday. It is time out for that. That's over. You're not going to be able to make it if that's the way you live. Do you understand? You are not going to be able to move forward and get the promises of God if that's what your Christian life is like. You have to know God for yourself. You have to know his voice for yourself. You have to know the scriptures for yourself. You have to be able to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit for yourself. That's where we are now. And if you go into 2017 with that old religious thing of just thinking, well, I went to church on Sunday, that's all I needed, you're going to get left behind. You're going to miss. There's going to be some things that God is doing that you're going to miss. One of the reasons I know you're going to miss is because there are some things that God has to tell us that he can't tell us on the quick tip, that he can't tell us on the short tip. Sometimes you've got to sit in the presence of the Lord and let him talk to you. Sometimes you've got to study and pour over the scriptures. It's not just like this quick thing. It's not fast food Christianity. It's not fast food spirituality. Sometimes you've got to sit at the Lord's feet and let him give you instructions about the days to come. What to do when. Setting goals. Setting deadlines. Uh, if he wants you to invest in something. If he wants you to move. If he wants you to have a book done by a certain day. If he has certain goals to accomplish in quarter one, 2018. You can't wait to start those goals till April. He meant for you to have those things done till March, and he's going to sit down and tell you that. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus to do all that. You can't do that by just listening to a quick sermon on Sunday morning. So if that is the way you want to live, you are going to miss out in 2018, I'm telling you, ahead of time. I'm prophesying to you ahead of time. You're going to miss out in 2018 if that's still where you are. So the people who do know their God will be able to resist him. Resist who? The schemes of the devil. The things that the enemy is going to throw in your path to try to slow you down or stop you altogether from moving forward. Because you're going to have to fight. That's part and parcel of taking the promised land, of getting the promises of God. You're going to have to fight to get them. Okay? And so you have to know the Lord so you can resist them. The people that know God will resist the devil. They will firmly resist them. They will be strong and they will take action. They will also do exploits. What does that mean? That means like when David came up against Goliath, 
He was about 17 years old, and the whole army of Israel was out there, and they were so scared of Goliath, they were paralyzed for 40 days. God was there, Jesus was there, the Holy Ghost was there, the Word was there, but those men were scared. They didn't have enough faith to act. So Goliath laughed at them, he made fun of them, he cursed them out in the name of his gods for over a month. And then, king, well he wasn't king yet, then young David came out just to bring his brother some lunch. And David got indignant and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Then David took action. He spoke a word. He spoke his faith. He said, this day God is going to deliver me into your hand and I'm going to cut your head off and feed it to the buzzards. He spoke it. And then he did it. Then he threw the stone, and God took that stone and pushed it in Goliath's head and killed him, and David went over there and cut his head off. What's the difference between the whole army of Israel and young David? The difference is David knew his God, and he took action. Do you understand? A lot of you have been looking at the promised land. You've been looking at where you want to be. You've been thinking about the financial level you want to be on, but you haven't taken any action. Okay? You have to take action, and the only way you do that is if you know God, because that's what gives you the confidence. That's what gives you the, the wherewithal. That's what gives you the backbone. That's what gives you the boldness, because you know that the Lord is with you, the, you know that the Lord is for you, and you know that you're in his will. And if you know God is with you, and you know God is for you, and you know you're in his will, you are unstoppable. There is no limit except your faith. Okay? So that's why you're going to have to take action. You're going to have to do it. And as I've been saying all year long, you're going to have to move into precision obedience. You're going to have to do what the Lord says when he says it the way he tells you to do it, to be able to move forward. So you're going to have to strengthen your relationship with God and develop your own boldness and confidence and move forward and take action. For example, let me give an example about writing. You know the mistake that most people make when they're trying to write something? two things. The first thing is they try to write it all at once. Second thing is they think they're going to write the, the next great best-selling novel in their first shot. You don't have to try to write your book all at once and you don't have to try to be the next whoever your favorite author is. You don't have to try to be them with your first book or even your 20th book. Okay? Write your book. Write it a line at a time if you have to, but sit down and take action. Get going. Start writing. Don't write it all at once, and don't make it seem like it has to be the best thing since the Bible. Just say what you have to say. Get it done. That's what's going to make the difference. That's what life responds to is action. Get the book done, and once you get it done, you can get some beta reading. You can get some critiques. You can get some editing. You can get some feedback. A whole lot of things can happen for you. You can pitch it to a publisher. You can self-publish. You can release it online. You can release it partially in chapters. You can start a Facebook group. So many things you can do once you have the book done. But you can't do that if the book isn't finished. Okay? So you must take action. That's what I'm trying to exhort you to do. So part one that we talked about today was you must know God for yourself. No more of this trying to have a relationship with God through the preacher. And part number two is you have to take action. That's how you're going to resist the devil and stand firm, by knowing God and taking action. How do you take action to resist the devil? I'll tell you how. You release your faith by confession. You speak the word of God. You speak what you want to happen and you speak God's word. You don't speak your fear and you don't speak what you don't want to happen. Okay, how do you resist the devil? You resist the devil through prayer. You saturate everything you're doing in prayer. You lift it up to God on a daily basis. And you must be specific when you talk to the Lord. Specifically talk to the Lord about what you want, where you are. Okay? Uh, so you resist him by confession. You resist him by prayer. Another way you resist the devil is in your thought life. You don't allow thoughts that are against the word of God or his promises to take root in your mind. Because that's where the devil's going to hit you with thoughts and emotions. To try to make you think and feel and then start saying things that are against the word of God and against the promises of God. So you resist the devil by confessing the word of God and confessing what you want. You resist the devil by prayer, by saturating everything you want with prayer and lifting everything up to the Lord in detail. Don't leave out any details when you talk to the Lord. And you resist the devil by being sure that the thoughts in your head are in line with God's word and God's promises. 
That's how you resist Satan. Okay, just to give you some practical tips. So when the devil comes at you and he's trying to give you those wrong ideas, he's trying to pull you over into wrong confession, he's trying to make you feel depressed. Some people are paralyzed with depression. He's trying to make you feel discouraged. He's trying to make you, here's another big one that we have to overcome as humans. We have this all or nothing mentality. I know that because I've wrestled with it myself. We have this all or nothing mentality that if it can't be the best thing ever, then just forget it. I'm not going to do it at all. If it can't be this huge thing, then forget it. I'm not going to try at all. That's the wrong idea. Okay? You need to get out there and do whatever it is you're doing on whatever level you're doing it on. You don't have to have an audience of a million. You can have an audience of one. If you are being used by God and one person is edified, you are successful. You are using your gifts. You are being used of God. Okay? So again, to review, and then I'm going to give a, a quick prophetic word, then we're going to close out with a prayer, and then I'm going to give that information I gave at the beginning for those that join late. Okay, so to review, we're talking about Daniel 11.32. By smooth words, he will turn to godlessness those who act wickedly toward the covenant. But the people who know their God will display strength and take action. Okay? So a quick review. Number one, you must know the Lord for yourself. You must spend time with God every day and learn to uh, hear his voice and learn to master his words. You cannot get by on one meal on Sunday morning anymore. You will not make it in 2018 if that's the way you live as a Christian. Number two, you have to resist the devil because the devil is going to come at you hard to try to stop you from moving forward with the promises of God. And the way you resist the devil is, number one, you confess the word of God by what you say and you speak what you want. Don't speak your fear. Number two, by prayer, you offer up to God all of your plans and all of your desires in great detail and saturate everything you're doing with prayer. And number three, you resist the devil by taking control of your thought life and not allowing the devil to set up a negative stronghold, uh, negative thoughts, not allowing negative thoughts to occupy any space in your mind. If a thought comes in your mind that's against the word of God or against the promises of God or against Satan, throw it out. Don't dwell on it. Don't meditate on it. Don't let it take root. Don't rehearse it. Okay? Okay. So, number one, you must know the Lord. Number two, you must resist the devil. And number three, you must take action. Okay? Write the play. Write the book. Make the phone call. Attend the seminar. Sign up for the classes. Make the investment. You say, but I might make a mistake. Of course you're going to make a mistake if it's the first time you've done something. That's not going to be the last mistake you make. Move forward anyway. Learn from your mistakes and keep rolling. Okay? But nothing's going to happen until you get that manuscript done. Nothing's going to happen until you get that federal employment identification number and get that bank account and open that business and make a business plan. Nothing's going to happen until you build that website. Nothing's going to happen until you get that book finished. Nothing's going to happen until you take action. Okay? If you don't take action in 2018, I'm sad to say that if you live to see 2019, you're going to be in the same place you are right now. Okay, you're going to be in the same place you are right now, sitting around talking about what they don't do and oh, poor me, feeling sorry for yourself and I can't catch a break and they won't do this for me and blah, 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 blah. You're going to be in the same place you are right now, this time next year, if you don't take action in 2018. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must act. Okay, you must act in 2018. Okay. So, uh, again, that was a quick review of what we uh, went over, and that was a Daniel 11.32. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to give you a quick prophetic word, then we're going to seal it with a prayer, and then I'm going to give you the information I gave you at the beginning of the broadcast in case you tuned in late. For thus saith the Lord, my people, I am ready. I am ready to move forward. I am ready to open doors for you. I am ready to give you victory over your enemies. I am ready to send angelic ambushments. I am ready to throw uh, to push the stone into Goliath's head. 
I am ready for you to cut off the head of your enemies. I am ready for you to possess the land. I am ready. So in the days to come, I will give you detailed and specific instructions on what I want you to do to move forward. Hear my voice. Obey my voice. Believe me and you shall prosper, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Okay, now I got blessed by that prophetic word myself. I'm receiving that. If don't nobody out there receive that, I'm receiving that one. Because I'm hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying on that. And when the Holy Ghost says, and in the days to come, God's going to give you details. That means it's time to sit down and write down the details. Because the Lord's going to spell some stuff out you, some stuff out for you before it happens. And then you get to act. I'm excited. So if don't nobody else receive that word, I'll receive that word. Okay? So I'm excited about that. Okay? All right, so let me close out with a quick prayer, and we're going to seal everything we talked about. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you just thanking you for an opportunity to come before your presence, thanking you for the prophetic word, thank you, thanking you for scripture, thanking you, O oh God, that we can know you personally. Yea, indeed, we must know you personally in these times, O oh God, and that we have to have our own relationship with you, and we have to know scripture for ourselves, and we have to know your voice. But thank you for an opportunity. Thank you for 2017. As it comes to a close, thank you for all that you've done already, and thank you for all that you are ready to do moving into the new year, into, into the new season. And we just ask you to give us ears to hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I certainly want to have ears to hear. And I know that those who are listening to me want to have ears to hear your voice because we don't want to miss. And we just thank you for your opportunity. We thank you, Father, for being such a good Father, for being our Daddy. We thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior, our Lover our Redeemer, our Lord, uh, our spiritual husband, our King, our prophet, our apostle, our chief apostle and chief prophet, everything you are, Jesus. We give you thanks and praise and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in us, for connecting us with the Father and the Son because we could not connect with heaven without you, precious Holy Spirit. We cannot connect with the Father and Son without the Spirit of God. So we give thanks to the Father, we give thanks to the Son, we give thanks to the Holy Ghost, three in one, and we give your name the glory, and we're looking forward to victory in the days to come. We seal this prayer of the authority in the name of Jesus, we seal it by the blood of Jesus on my authority as a prophet of God, and we stand against all backlash and retaliation against the enemy. The word of God is done, and we release the anointing for faith and obedience, strength, knowledge of God so that we can do exploits. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I was blessed by that word. I hope you were too, so I'm going to repeat. Uh, God bless you as well. I'm going to repeat what I talked about at the beginning of the hour. This is my last live broadcast for 2017, uh, so I'm taking a break, but I'll be back on January 14th. That's the second Sunday in uh, January in 2018. But I am going to release a prophetic locator word for both 2017 and 2018. Prophetic locator words help you find where you are in the spirit. So at the end of the year, it's basically like Revelation 1, 2, and 3, where the Lord gives you your grades. Where the Lord tells you what he's pleased with, what he's not pleased with, what you did get done, what is left undone, and what you need to do. So you can locate yourself in the spirit. And then I'm going to uh, ask God for a prophetic located word for 2018 so we can start the year off right and be sure that we're in step with Christ so that we know what God is expecting so we can obey and follow his voice. Because if you can't locate yourself in the spirit, if you don't know where God is, you're going to miss. And you're going to miss big time because 2018 is not just going to be a year of change. It's going to be a year of swift change. And it's going to be a year of massive change. So you better be in step with God so you don't miss out. All right? Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you to all my Periscope audience. And thank you to all my Facebook people that have tuned in all year long. Thank you so much. You know, I've, I counted a privilege to be used of God prophetically. And so I'm looking forward to releasing that locator word. I'm looking forward to taking a break and spending some time with the Lord myself and getting set for 2018. And I will see you again on January 14th. 2018 for uh, the next live prophetic word on this channel. Thank you so much. God bless. Have a good holiday. Be safe. And remember that the Lord your God is with you always. Amen and amen.